Repairs are always satisfying, but the projects I like best are the ones where I actually get to build something. I'm heading to the rebuilding exchange in the city to create a project for my home from scratch. Blake Sloan is the production manager here at the Rebuilding Exchange, which means that when it comes to turning salvaged building materials into new furniture and accessories, this is the go-to guy. In fact, he teaches classes on this stuff here at the Rebuilding Exchange, and today I'm getting a private lesson. Well, we're about to turn this into a little end table, and uh, we've got a couple of various things. Everything came from an old house. So that's kind of the genius of the Rebuilding Exchange. You're not just buying a new piece of wood, you're getting history along with it. Yeah, absolutely. All this stuff comes from local buildings in Chicago, and all this stuff that might end up in a landfill comes here instead and is available for sale to you and me. Before I learn how to turn this pile of wood into an end table, we need a few supplies. We'll need a saw, some wood glue, clamps, a hammer, nails, and a couple drills. You can do this job with one, but two makes it a little easier. We'll also need some wood screws and, of course, a pair of safety goggles. So the first thing we're going to do is build a little box. Okay. And the box that we're going to make is going to be the size of the table that we want. And I'm not going to use a tape measure at all. I just know that I want a little end table about that big by about that big, right? Okay. All right, so we're going to use this compound miter saw or chop saw, but you could easily accomplish this with a hand saw, a circular saw, uh, jigsaw would probably do the trick too. I have one of those. All right. And I want my box to have two equal sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark this piece. Instead of using a tape measure, I'm just gonna duplicate the piece. Thank you, sir. Blake cuts down the four pieces that will make up our box. And of course, it's perfect. So there's our simple box. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of wood glue on here. Think about what side you like better and face that out. This is a very basic woodworking joint. We just call this the butt joint. It's not the, the finest joint. joint around, but a little glue will strengthen it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and clamps come take in handy. these clamps. Sure. We'll hold this box together nice and tight. Now that we're clamped, it's time for some finishing nails. Blake pre-drills two holes per side so that we don't split this old wood when we nail it down. So we've got our box. Okay. Now, before we go any further, we're gonna go ahead and set our table top on here. Okay. And that's what I'm using these wide planks for. Again, I like the character. Yeah, they're cool. So we'll just set this in place. And I like to give myself about an inch, inch and a half overhang. Again, okay. For, for this rustic little table, I'm not too concerned that it's perfect. So we'll just sort of eyeball it there. And then I'm gonna mark it here about the same. Blake saws the planks for the table top. And once he's happy with the layout, pre-drills and nails the top to the box. Once the tabletop is complete, we just need to cut and attach some legs. There are a couple ways to do this, and Blake is going to show me the most basic. For your classic end table, we're going to make it about 20 inches off the ground. That'll sit okay. nice next to a sofa. So we'll just grab some of these 2x4s and uh, see if we can't get four 20-inch pieces. Glasses on. Ready to go. All right. So again, I'm just gonna use this to duplicate okay. the leg onto the other pieces. After all four legs are cut and we're sure they match in size, it's time to attach. And we're gonna just drop our legs in, right? Really? You can it's see right how there. this is gonna go. One in each corner. You can make a lot of creative decisions about which way you wanna orient Ooh. the legs, mm -hmm. right? Should ponder this first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. Hmm. I think let's go with this way. This feels Sounds right. Good. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of wood glue, if you don't mind passing that to me. No, not at all. And we'll just put it on both sides of this 2x4 where it's going to meet that little table frame. It's a little extra. Make sure that's nice and tight. Blake drills pilot holes for each leg, and this time we use screws to fasten them to our tabletop. All right, so we got one last leg to put on. All right. But before I just glue and screw that in, I actually like to clamp it. So I want to clamp this in place. Just to see if the table sits. Flip the table over, uh, see gotcha. if it sits. And I can always sort of make an adjustment to that leg. I gotcha. So we'll just gently flip that over. Yeah, that's, that's beefy right there is what that is. There you go. Not bad for an hour's worth of work and 30 bucks in supplies. This is the most rustic version of this table, but you could sand it, stain it, and embellish it as much as you'd like for your own home. That's the kind of beauty of a project like this. No one will have a table quite like yours. Shh.